Before we start the video, make sure you have this note sheet out. Yesterday we filled in the front. We talked about how to convert from fractions to percents and percents back to decimals and fractions. And then we talked about the first type of percentage problem. That is, how do I find a percent that one number is of another number? <coughs> Today, we'll be looking at two types of problems. This type, <coughs> excuse me, this type, uh, the second type, is finding a, finding a percent of a number. On both of these types, we're going to be given the percent. So the first one, we were given a... Uh, we were given uh, two numbers and asked to find the percentage. Now we're going to be given the percent and asked to find, um, asked to find the number. So the, the type here, if you want to fill this in on your note sheet, okay, what is blank percent or whatever percent I give you of a number? Okay, so whatever the number is, we're going to take that percent of that number. Now there are two methods to do this. The first method is to set up an equation. This is very, very easy, especially if you remember what is and of mean mathematically. Is, as you better recall, remember that means to be. When I say your age is 12, your age is 13, I'm assigning that value to you. So is means equal. Of means multiply. Those are two words we dealt with way back, chapters 1, 2, and 3. So set up an equation using these words, and I'll show you how that works in a second here. The other, the other is to set up a proportion. Now, if you remember what a proportion is, this is two equal ratios. If you remember the definition, if you flip your paper back over to the front, you remember the definition of a percent. It's a special type of ratio where the percent is compared to 100. So notice when they give me a percent, they're actually giving me a ratio. So what I can do then is I can figure out, okay, I don't know. I know what the whole thing is here. So I'm doing notice of this number here. Remember we talked about yesterday. Of refers to the, the whole thing that you're taking this, this out of. Um, but I don't know how much I'm taking out of that whole number. So what I've got to do is I've got to keep make 100 equal this. And remember, with percents, I can cross multiply to make that happen. So let's look at an example here. We'll do both methods. 78% of 5. The first method, set up an equation, could not be any easier. Because all you do is you go word by word. The word what is the same thing as, well, that's your variable, right? That's what I'm trying to solve for, x. Is, that's the same thing as equals. Now here's the only thing. Remember that 78% is a ratio. So I can't just write 78, because 78% doesn't actually equal 70. It equals 78 over 100. So the only thing is, when you set up an equation, you have to write this as a decimal. You could definitely write this as a fraction. 78 one hundredths, and then of means times, times 5, and do 78 hundredths times 5. But when we go into a calculator, it's a lot easier to plug in a percent. So don't forget. With your, your percents, it doesn't equal 78, it equals 78 to 100. So make this 0 0.78 times 5, and pull out a calculator, and we get 3.9 for x. And notice, does that answer make sense? Think about this. 78% isn't quite 100% of 5, but it's more than halfway, so 3.9, my answer should be smaller than 5. And it is. Now, for your proportions, keep in mind, 78 is really 78 over 100, right? That's the ratio I want to keep equal. And then, on the other side, I'm just going to use is over of because I want to keep part over whole thing. So, of is closest to 5. And notice, the word what is closest to is. That variable, x, is closer to is. So this is x over 5. Then if I cross multiply, notice what happens. 100x equals 78 times 5, which is what I would have had over here, but I divided this by 100. Watch what's going to happen over here. 78 times 5 equals 390. To solve this equation, what do I do? Divide by 100, just like I did over there. So notice. 
The math is the same. But I don't know about you. I'm not going to take off points either way. You know, you choose which one you want to do. If this makes more sense to you, the fact that a percentage is a ratio, and this really shows that, that's fine. But this, to me, looks a little bit easier. So you decide what you want to do here. All right, 127%. So let's go word by word. X is equals 127%. Well, that's 1.27. Remember, it's got to be bigger than 1 because it's bigger than 100%. Of 16. Notice each word, each word has a number or a symbol assigned to it. It isn't always going to be that way. You'll notice some of the word problems we're going to do in class tomorrow that uh, some of these word problems, they try and clutter it up and mix it up for you have to pull these words out. This is just the basics. So 1.27 times 16, 20.32. Now think about it. Does that make sense? My whole thing is 16, but I'm going more than 100% of that. So therefore, yes, I would expect to get a number that's higher than the number uh, I started with. So next, proportion style. And guys, when you do these problems, you do one or the other of these. You do not do both. You don't do both sets of work. You pick one. Okay, I'm just showing you both to show that it can be done more than one way. So 127%, why, that's 127 to 100. That's my ratio that I want to keep the same. Is is closer to what? So that's x of is closer to 16. So I have 100x. Uh, you'll notice the work looks a little bit similar to the one above, just the numbers over here have been changed. So 100x equals 2032 divided by 100, and x equals 20.32. Same thing as over here. Okay? The main mistake people are going to make, they're going to forget to change that to, uh, to a decimal. All right, so that's type two. Last type, here we go. This is kind of the same thing. They're going to give me a percent, only this time they're going to say, what's the whole thing? So they're going to say, okay, I'm not going to tell you what the number is, but I'm going to tell you that a percentage of this number is four. So they're going to tell you, like, there are 15 boys in the class, and that's half of the class, so how many people are in the class? Notice how that works. 15% of the class, or I'm sorry, 50% of the class is 15 boys, so how many in the class? Well, that's 30. We're going to get a number that's larger for that type of problem. Again, same, same uh, two methods here as for the last one. And by the way, guys, this proportion, this works for when you want to find the percent too. You just do is over of and x over 100 because we don't know what the, uh, the number compared to 100 is. So it works for the percentages too. Um, so let's do both methods here. Again, you pick one. Uh, the equation though, obviously is going to be a little easier as long as you remember to change these percents to decimals. So 60 is means equals 12%, 0.12 of means times what number? X. We don't know one number, so we call it x. Divide by 0.12, and x equals. Notice what this is saying. This is saying that the part of this whole number is 60. So if I take 12% of this number I don't know, I get 60. So we're looking for something that's actually much larger than 60 here. So 60 divided by 0.12, 500. In other words, if I take 12% of 500, or I get 60. So make sure your answers make sense, as always. All right, on the other side, 12%, 12 over 100. It still is over up, part over whole. Notice now, though, 60 is closest to is. And what number is closest to of? So notice now, x is on the bottom instead of on the top. So the only thing that, that changes based on the type is where x is. Type 1, x is here, because I'm trying to figure out what part of 100. Type 2, x is here, because I'm trying to figure out the part. And part 3, or type 3, x is here, because I'm trying to figure out uh, the entire thing. So, cross multiply, 12x equals 60 times 100. So, 12x equals 6,000. Uh, Notice, guys, it doesn't matter if I do 100 times x or 12 times x. Well, here it does matter, so 12 times x. So, notice now, instead of having 100x like I had in type 2, 
Now I've got uh, the percent x. So divide by 12, and x equals 500. Okay? All right, last one. 75 is, means equals 25%, 0.25, of times what number? x. Now divide both sides by 0.25. And notice what this, again, what this is saying. If I take 25% of a certain number, I get 75. So 75 is not the bigger number here. The bigger number is 300. Pretty basic stuff. Last of all, proportion here. Okay, so 25 over 100 is closer to 75. Uh, and so, there we go. What number closer to of? And so 25x equals 100 times 75. So 25x equals 7,500. Divide both sides by 25. Running out of room. x equals 300.